Broadcast dynamic microphones are a great choice for indoor dialogue. They do a really good job of rejecting background noise and room echo, but sometimes we want to create a shot where the microphone isn't in it. And so then we need to look at a boom microphone. And there's many of them available, and I've been actually looking to upgrade my boom microphone for some time. So this video is the first in a series where I'm going to look at a number of different options. Today it's the Samson CO2s. The two most popular types of microphones used for a boom for dialogue are shotgun microphones and pencil condenser microphones. Both have advantages and disadvantages. Shotgun microphones, like this Cinco Mic D2, have the advantage of being very directional and being able to be used from a great distance away. So if you can't get the microphone near to the subject, they can be a good choice. The downside though is for indoor dialogue, they often suffer from phase issues. That's caused by these interference tubes along the sides of the mic that are used to cancel out sound, and that's where we get great rejection from. But when we have early reflections indoor, it often can cause phase issues again that will make the microphone unusable and sound warbly. The other type of microphone popular for use on a boom is a pencil condenser microphone. This is an AKG P170. Many of you have seen my review on this, but this is just one example of the type of microphone we can use on a boom. The advantages of pencil condenser microphones is they come in a variety of pickup patterns. So this P170 is a cardioid. Today we're going to be looking at the Samson CO2s. Those are super cardioids, so they have a little different pickup pattern that I'll show you in a moment. And this allows you to really tailor the area you want to capture the sound in. But the downside is the microphone has to be placed just out of frame. You want to have it as close to you as possible. It really doesn't have the range that a shotgun microphone offers. So in this video, I'll unbox the Samson CO2s. Then I'll take a look at the specs, including the pickup pattern and frequency response. And then we'll go ahead and hook it up as a boom and test it out for dialogue. Now I'm going to compare the microphone against a few others. It'll be unprocessed audio. And at the end, I'll finish up with a processed example of what this mic could sound like. And before I unbox the CO2s, I wanted to remind you about my podcast package giveaway. I'm giving away an Audio-Technica AT2040 and a Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 audio interface with an XLR cable. Details are available in the three participating videos that are linked in the pinned comment below. Okay, so let's go ahead and unpackage these microphones. It's come a little plastic slip bag over the case. It has a sleeve with some information. Now, uh, it's a hard shell plastic case, so it gives you some decent protection for the microphones. This is, of course, a two-pack. So uh, inside, first, we have uh, information about the microphone and CO2 condenser microphone, another little instruction sheet. And then we have two microphones in here. Each one has its own mount. They're rubberized, so they should hold the microphone very well. They have a good amount of weight to them. Pull the other one out here. And uh, just looking at it, the pattern is a super cardioid. So even though the instructions say cardioid, these are a super cardioid pattern microphone. Also comes with a couple of wind screens for over the end. And that's what we get. The Samson CO2s are condenser microphones that require 48 volts of phantom power. Now there's some confusion as to whether these are cardioid or supercardioid because the instructions say cardioid, but on the microphone itself, the pickup pattern image is that of supercardioid. So we'll check that out when we do the audio tests. Now other specifications on this microphone include a frequency response of 40 to 20,000 Hertz, sensitivity of negative 40 dB with an impedance of 200 ohms, it has an equivalent noise ratio of 22 decibels with a max SPL of 134 dB, dynamic range of 112 dB, and current consumption of 3.5 milliamps. These microphones weigh 170 grams, so they have a little bit of weight if you're going to hold them on the end of a boom pole. And now I'm on the Samson CO2. I have it connected directly up to my Focusrite Scarlett 8i6. I have the gain set at 1230, and there is no processing be applied to this microphone. I thought I'd bring it into frame first so we could go through the off-axis rejection test as well as plosive tests before I mount it in the boom location for the rest of the audio tests, including the microphone comparisons. So right now, I have the microphone at about six inches away from my mouth. I have it pointed across because this microphone is likely to uh, accept plosives pretty readily. So we'll test that out. But first, let's do the off-axis. 
So this is speaking directly into the microphone. I'll go ahead and turn it, and now I am at 90 degrees to the microphone, and this is the kind of sound you're going to get. I'll continue turning it. I'm now at 180 degrees to the front of the microphone. So we're testing out that back lobe to see if, in fact, this is a supracardioid pattern. Now I'll turn it around another 90 degrees to the side of the microphone, and finally I'll bring it back to the center. And listening back to the sound from the off-axis rejection test, I'm going to say that I believe this microphone is a supercardioid pattern. There certainly is a minor lobe of sensitivity directly in the rear of the microphone. Now that'll mean that we have a tighter pattern up front, which could be very useful if we have noise off to the sides in that. So I mean, there's a trade-off with everything, but I think a supercardioid can be a good choice for a boom microphone, certainly. Now we'll go ahead and test the plosives. First, we'll do it without having anything in front of the mic. People, people, because. And definitely getting some plosives through there. I'm also going to do a test with a pop filter in front, so we'll just hold that in front. People, people, because, because. And uh, that, uh, that seemed in my ears at least to reduce it quite a bit. And finally, we'll go ahead and throw the included foam filter on and try that out. Okay, and now I've placed the included foam filter on and we'll test that out. People, people, because, because. That seemed to help a little bit. Not as good, certainly, as the full pop filter. Now we'll go ahead and do the handling noise uh, test. And this is going to be important if you wanted to hand boom this, so like a manual boom pole, or use it in an application like I have it here, although that's not really the purpose of what we're looking at today. And the included mounts with this microphone are a rubberized shock mount. So they do have their own shock mounts. Certainly we have other options that we could use, but I'm going to tap on the microphone in the boom stand and we'll see what it picks up. And it's definitely picking up some of that sound. We'll try it with another type of shock mount and see if it makes a difference. And now I have the microphone in an elasticized shock mount. So I'll tap the boom arm again. And I think that may be a little better than the included mounts, but definitely handling noise is going to be an issue with this microphone if you wanted to use it on a hand boom pole. And now I've gone ahead and set the microphone up as a boom mic. I have it just about out of the screen, just at the edge here, and it's about 18 inches away from my mouth. This is unprocessed audio. I have it hooked up directly to the Focusrite Scarlet 8i6. This time I have the gain actually set to about three o'clock, so I wanna get a little more signal coming in because they have the microphone a fair distance away. And again, this is what it sounds like with unprocessed audio. Now we'll go ahead and compare it to a couple of other microphones. And now I've connected up the AKG P170. This is also a small diaphragm condenser microphone. I have it mounted just out of view here on the screen, so about 18 inches away from my mouth. This again is unprocessed audio. It's going into the Focusrite 8i6. I have the gain also set at three o'clock here, 48 volt phantom power. This is the sound from the P170. Okay, and now I'm back on the Samson CO2. Again, unprocessed audio, Focusrite Scarlet 8i6, gain set at three o'clock. And this is what the sound is like. Now we'll go ahead and throw the shotgun microphone on and see what the difference is. And now I have the Synco Mic D2 connected up to the Focusrite 8i6. I have the gain set at about 130. This is a shotgun microphone, so it's not going to need as much gain in a boom situation. Again, unprocessed audio here, and this is what it sounds like. And once again, back on the Samson CO2 with unprocessed audio. I'm going to go ahead and give you a few examples of processed audio in the boom position. And now I've engaged Neutron 3 from Isotope, and we'll just try three profiles here. Right now you're listening to the forward dialog profile applied to the Samson CO2. I haven't adjusted anything as far as the interface. It's still the Scarlet 8i6, gain set at 3 o'clock, 48 volt phantom power. But this is what forward dialog sounds like. Now we'll choose the low mid warmth, and uh, this is just the idea here is to give you a little more low end. Uh, and again, none of these profiles are tailored by Isotope to this microphone. This is just something to give you an idea of some processed audio. And now what I'll do is I'll go over to Big Broadcast 3. This, of course, has the most bass emphasis. And because we're losing that uh, bass from the proximity effect by having the microphone mounted far away, 
This will allow you to gain back some of that bass response in this type of application. So if that's the sound you like, this is a way to do it. And now we'll just hop over to this Samson CO2 process that I created. This is a, just a little bit of a tailored process for this microphone that something like what I might use if I was using this for a boom mic. And this is how it sounds. And because I know a number of you will be interested in what the EQ profile could be on this microphone when we have it in this type of setup with the mic in shot, I'm also going to go ahead and do a demonstration of some processed audio with the microphone like this. And so, of course, we're starting out with unprocessed audio. It's connected directly to the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, 48 volts phantom power, gain set at 1230. Now we'll go ahead and check out some processed audio. All right, and once again, I've gone ahead and started up Neutron 3 here, and I have a little bit of processing applied to this microphone. So here we have the forward dialog process, and this is what the sound is like. I'll also try the podcast preset. So now I've changed it over to podcast. And so this again is just Isotope's example of what processing might be set up like and not particularly tailored to this microphone, but this is the podcast setting. And finally, I'll go ahead and turn Big Broadcast 3 on. And now we have Big Broadcast 3. This certainly is going to add a lot more low end, a lot of bass to this microphone. And I'm not suggesting that this is a podcasting microphone, but nonetheless, some of you may want something versatile and you're going to use it for a lot of applications. And so I wanted to give you an idea of what the sound would be like. Hope this video has given you some idea of the sound you can get out of this microphone. I'm of course looking to upgrade my boom microphone, so this is the first in a series of a number of microphones I'm considering for that. So I hope you'll join me for some of the other ones. Of course, if you're looking for an off-camera mic, this may be helpful for you as well. And I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, consider smashing that like button and subscribe if you'd like to check out some of my new content arriving weekly. Or check out one of the videos on the screen or the playlist. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.